Welcome, my name is Andreas, I am CTO of Nexio and today I'm going to talk about Go and Domain Driven Design and how it empowers us as Nexio building the right thing. We as Nexio are a Vienna based startup and we develop software which empowers to build operative data ecosystems. We allow our customers to manage, govern and share data and that in a trusted way. And the main product at Nexio is the Nexio Data Hub. You could imagine the Nexio Data Hub, it's a component, a software, which sits in the center of your data infrastructure. It communicates with different microservices, with different databases, also maybe with other data hubs, and has a web UI and can be controlled over a CLI and in an automated way. So at the beginning of our journey, we had this question how we started and we have two questions. So the first was what technology should we use? And the second one, it's, I can't say that, it's part of this talk more, is the system architecture and design patterns. So first the technology brief. We have a small agile team which already had experience with Go in small and mid-sized projects. And we looked at it and then it was almost a simple and fast decision we like the properties, the simplicity of Go, the properties regarding the refactoring, also the properties to security and concurrency features which you need in such a system, which is talking a lot to other systems. So Go was set and then we thought about our other requirements. So what we want to build, we have this Nexio Data Hub, which should be an enterprise product, which should long lasting, so we have a plan for five, 10, maybe 20 years, and it should evolve over time. So we have to think a little bit about architecture. We say, okay, what we need as a basic stuff. And here, <coughs> surprisingly, two really important books come into play. So Clean Architecture from Robert C. Martin and Domain Driven Design from Eric Evans. So there is no way around these two books. And then we looked a little bit into it and we say, okay, so we have this book with a lot of patterns from the enterprise side, you have come in mind big Java projects with small files, a lot of code which is not readable, and you have on our side this Go technology, simple. I say, okay, can this fit together? Is this a fit? I can say yes, and definitely for us it is a fit, and I will show you now how we did it and also what the benefits are there. So let's start from the domain driven design and start with some domain objects. So we have here a data set. We have to do a lot with data sets, you could imagine. Data set, data set has distributions and distribution has policies. On this domain objects, we then add domain logic. So here are some examples, really simple ones to add a distribution. Uh, also other logic, maybe to get the combined policy and so on. Here you're really modeling your domain, so you're really near to the customer. Also be aware that there is no details here what the infrastructure is, so how it is run, how it the uh, database is and so on. So only domain here. When you do a lot with domain objects, you also have to think about the domain lifecycle. So you start at the top, you create the domain object, then you have to maybe store it in a database, bring it back, modify it, store it again. And if the end of the life cycle is reached, maybe archive it and then delete it. So if you look at the life cycle, you need two pieces. You need something which creates objects and something which stores it to a database. And here two patterns come into play. So the first is the repository pattern. This pattern starts with an interface in the domain space. So in the, the, the domain space says, okay, I need this and that should be possible. It should be possible to persist the data set. It should be possible that uh, I can get back a data set by UUID. It should be possible that you delete the data set. That's interface definitions. And also here, be aware there is no it's not, there is no definition how it is implemented. So that comes later. That comes with a real instance, for example, you say, okay, I build a dataset repository and here in this 
persist data set function, I really do the implementation, how it's interactive with the database and so on. And what you also find here, we inject a factory to this repository. So the factory is the place where we encapsulate all the logic of, which is used to create the domain object and also to bring it back from a database representation maybe. So the repository takes this factory and then can uh, respond real domain objects. So what we saw now is we have domain objects, we have repository, we have factories, we can work with them. But we also need to run it in our systems. We need infrastructure, we need databases and so on. So therefore, we go one step out and we think about, and here comes clean architecture into the picture. That is a diagram from the clean architecture book. It's a really famous diagram. I really more like this diagram if you see it a little bit differently. So for that, uh, do a little trick with me. We first cut the diagram and then wrap it up. We get that. And if we turn it once more, the diagram looks like that. And I think it's more intuitive to read as the circle representation. So here, for a quick example, start at the UI. The UI talks with a presenter. A presenter could be a HTTP API, a REST API, for our example. The API endpoints talk with the use case layer. It's also called the app layer sometimes. And these are governing on these entities. And that's how the domain objects I talked before. And to fulfill the purposes in the use cases, the use case layer gets injected a repository. And so they can fetch domain objects, work on them, and give it back to the presenter, which gives it then back to the UI. Also be aware here, the dependency is strictly from top to bottom. So the entities layer does know nothing about what's happening above. So it does know nothing about the application. It only talks to main, and that's it. And also this use case layer knows nothing about how these repositories are implemented, or who is accessing it. Is it an HTTP REST API, or is it a GRPC API, or is it something else? So let's go now again back to code and see how we implemented that in code. Here you see the main function where everything is bundled together. We first start with a factory and a repository, initialize that, and then we bundle together an application with, a, here you see, the new dataset handler. And then we run this application here, for example, as a HTTP server, then it can be consumed by the UI over REST, for example. So let's go one more into detail what this new dataset handler is doing there. And here you can see everything comes together. Here you see at the corner top, we are directly in this intersection of the repository, the presenters, and the entities, so the domain logic. So what is happening in this handler and for this example in this get data set method? This method is called by the presenter. It passes a UUID, then the handler, which got the repository at start time, can pull out this data set from the persistence layer, can, not in this case, but could work on it with the main logic and then give it back to the UI again. Good. So you saw a lot of code and a lot of what's happening and a lot of structuring the code. So you're not, now you think maybe why we're doing it, why we just do a HTTP API and <coughs> Uh, put up a MySQL database, store the data there, pull it out, do some create, read, update, delete functions, that's it. When we looked at it, we found three um, design principles, paradigms, which we really liked. The first one comes from the domain-driven design. It's this ubiquitous language you maybe heard of before. And what it means is that the domain experts and the software developers get a common understanding about what has to be done. And in this setup, as you saw it, the domain layer, this entities layer and the clean architecture is at the bottom and it has nothing to do with everything else. So they can focus only on what has to be done. And everything else, how it's run, how the databases are run and so on, that's 
all details which can be figured out by some really good software developers but here the magic is happening and here also the value for the customer is generated. So we have this common language and we have also this common language which evolves over time. So this domain can evolve over time and the system is a really good structure to evolve over time. So that's from DDD. Another principle which also for me is really important is SRP or Single Responsibility Principle. This is defined, the latest definition, one of the latest definition in the Clean Architecture book from Robert C. Martin. It says, a model should be responsible to one and only one actor. To rephrase that, or in some other words, if you have a package and there are change requests from different stakeholders, which maybe also are conflicting, then you have a problem and you should refactor a code and separate it. So this is, has, all, has a lot to do with refactoring, how your code evolves over time, how you can test it, who your packages are responsible to. If, for example, you have a package which is responsible to two different parties, you get into conflicts and you get into problems. And I already said testable. That's for me also one of the must-haves. So if you ship a product to a customer, you have to be 150% sure that it's tested, that everything is working. And if you go through the code we saw before, it also really well fits with the testing pyramid. So at the bottom you have this unit test. You, that also fits really well with the domain objects. You have, the domain objects are completely stripped away from all the databases and everything else, so you, it's really easy to write a lot fast and good unit tests. In this middle layer, which is often hard in such systems which are communicating with a lot of other microservices, where you do API testing, integration testing, component testing, SRP comes really nicely here. So you can test it component by component. And also these patterns with, for example, a repository comes in handy. You could imagine this repository interface, you can implement an instance as a test repository, a test database and you can mock it and you don't need the database in the tests and so on and so on. So you have really a, a nice way to test everything. And yes, on top, GUI tests as well are done to bring everything together and the, also the user experience is nice. So yeah, we have the ubiquitous language, single responsibility pattern, paradigm and testability. Now move again one step out and see and go back also to the title of this presentation and see what are the benefits also for Nexia or for, for us as a company and as a team and why I said it enables and empowers us to building the right thing. With this setup we have a clean structure with decoupled packages. That really comes nicely when you onboard new members to your team. You can point them to different parts of the code, they really quickly understand and they also know when they have to implement new features where to put it. So it's really easy to implement the requirements you get in. And also keep in mind the domain driven design approach where we really closely work together with our customers to fulfill their problems. So that's really important for us to get this <clears throat> direct feedback from the customer. And here, easy to refactor is crucial because if the customer says, that's not what I wanted, I want it another way, you have to refactor your code and it, if you then have to restructure your whole application, you maybe won't do it. So refactoring and also testing, it's clear. If you want to refactor fast, you have to test really well and all tests have to be in place so you can trust your refactoring. So what brings that for us? We can develop fast and iteratively. And that's what for me, also the definition and the title of this talk, Go and DDD is for me building the right thing because we can develop fast, we can trust in our systems and deliver really good value to our customer. And if you out there who's seeing this talk 
I also love code as we do and want to work in an amazing team which is really innovative how they approach enterprise problems and how they do software development. I welcome you. Contact me per email, contact me on LinkedIn. <clears throat> we get in touch, we talk together and I'm happy, I'm happy to hear from you. So thank you from my side and thank you.